So in the previous video, we talked about how do we measure a PPE, but now we're going to talk about how do we measure when we acquire a property plan and equipment. So we have different formulas. We have on account basis, we have on cash basis, which you already know, but this time we're going to talk about things that you don't know. So sometimes a company may issue a share capital in exchange for the property. So it has different priorities. The first one would be fair value of the property received. Next is fair value of share capital. Then the last one is par value of share capital. So you're gonna learn that in this example. So let's say in Amazon, which is a really famous store, they're trying to sell what they call zip up backpacking shoes. What's really nice about this one is that it can be a shoes and a bag at the same time and they're selling it for 1 million so in exchange what you did is you issued 20,000 shares quoted off 60 per share price and par value of 20 so if we're using the fair value of the property received we would debit equipment for 1 million which is the value of the zip up backpacking shoes then credit share capital for 400,000 we got it from multiplying the shares issued by the par value. Then the excess would be credited to share premium of 600000 But what if the fair value of the property received is not available? Then we would go to the fair value of the share capital. So we would debit equipment of 1200000 which we got it by multiplying the shares issued by the quoted price per share of sixty. Then we credit share capital with the same amount of 400,000. Then the excess of 800,000 would be credited to share premium. So what if the fair value of the share capital is also not available? Then we would go to the, our last resort, which is par value of share capital. So we would debit equipment and credit share capital for the same amount of 400,000. Notice that there's no share premium because we are using the par value of the share capital. So sometimes a company may issue a bonds payable and I gotta tell you that it is the same method with issuance of share capital but it has different priorities. So the first one would be fair value of bonds payable, second is fair value of the asset received which is the first priority of issuance of share capital, then the last one would be face value of bonds payable. Sometimes may, a company may also exchange their own non-cash asset to you the property so these are the priorities given and just to give you a quick example let's say you have a watch and that's what you want to exchange for the zip up backpacking shoes so let's say the fair value is nine hundred thousand the carrying amount is eight fifty thousand if we're going to use our first priority which is the fair value of the property given then we would debit equipment for 900,000 and credit also equipment for 850,000 which is the carrying amount we also classify a watch as an equipment all right so the excess of 50,000 would be credited to gain now what if the fair value of the property given is not available then we're going to use the fair value of the property received. So we would debit equipment for 1 million, which is the value of the zip up backpack sh shoes, then credit equipment for the carrying amount of 850,000, then the excess of 15,000 would be credited also. And if it's not available, we would use the carrying value of the equipment given. So we would debit equipment for 850,000 and credit equipment also for 850,000. We would no longer credit gain because we're using the carrying value. And notice that when it comes to exchange of property, we're using the gain, not share premium because we're not issuing shares. So that's it for today, account holics. If you have any question, leave it down in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next video.